This is a pretty old game uh, by Karpov um, that was played about 30 years ago and um, he played it against uh, Sergei Dolmatov. Uh, this game shows a very good example of how to um, exploit the weaknesses uh, of the pawn structure that black gets in a Sveshnik variation of the system and defense. Um, after the opening moves, uh, we get the spawn structure where white has a strong knight on d5 and um, in this line where white plays knight to d5 uh, his intention is uh, after bishop e7 to exchange on f6 and thus to keep his knight on d5 for the time being. Um, c3, castle, knight c2, white intends to play a4 and by doing that uh, to put pressure on the a pawn and also to free up the square on c4 for his bishop. Uh, in this line, um, which black chose in this game, uh, black tries to prevent that, so he goes rook to b8 and therefore if white goes pawn to a4 then black is going to capture and then capture on b2. Um, one way for white to deal with that is to uh, try to exploit that uh, delay and to start to attack on the king side with pawn to h4. Uh, the idea is that uh, now the bishop is deprived of the g5 square, um, it's bad for him to take on h4 because of queen h5 obviously, and um, this allows white to then transfer the knight to e3 and the bishop won't be able to challenge it. Um, even so, even though this is now the main line, bishop e2, which Karpov played, is also a pretty good option. It makes the game less theoretical, but there are a lot of positional subtleties, uh, as we'll see. So now, as normal, black puts the bishop on g5, and now he's going to capture on f3 if the knight ever comes out that way. White castles, and black um, continues with his development. This natural move, bishop to e6, however, is not the the most popular one um, and at the moment it's more common to play something like pawn to a5 and the idea is to also deprive this knight um, on c2 from the b4 square as well so black basically wants to make sure that the knight can't go um, to b4 and can't go to e3 all this is to uh, Prepare the assault against this knight on d5, something like knight to e7, and that's the idea behind a5. First, uh, prevent knight c to b4, and then to play knight to e7 and challenge that knight. Um, and the game can continue with something like queen to d3, and then bishop e6, or knight to e7. And if knight to e3, then black is going to exchange it and um, develop his pieces. The only problem the black has on this line is the weakness of the DC pawn, but he's able to carefully defend it, and he should be okay in this line. Um, and similar themes have come up in the game, but I have had a slightly more, uh, uh, had a slightly better version of, of those positions. After bishop e6, Karpov continued with queen d3, activates the queen, maybe prepares rook to d1, starting to put more pressure on the d6 pawn. Uh, the queen moves forward, this is to connect the rooks, uh, but that um, removes the protection of the g5 bishop, so Karpov exploits that immediately. And this is a well-known position um, in which Talmadov made what became a, a classic mistake. Um, and um, he played on to f6. This move has a couple of drawbacks. Um, for one thing, it was better to just go bishop to g8 and uh, keep the bishop um, away from the king side and keep it safe. This now becomes um, impossible because the pawn is blocking the bishop. But what's worse is that um, one of white's ideas in this line is to trade off this bishop um, by playing something like bishop to g4. If the pawn stays on um, f7, and white goes h3 and then say bishop to g4, black is just going to ignore it. And if white takes, he's going to capture back with a, with a pawn 
and he's going to have a better control over d5 square that way. Um, after f6, this becomes impossible because now the pawn has advanced, and this gives Karpov a very reasonable platforming of these bishops, so that he can increase the control over the light squares. So naturally, he first puts the pressure on um, the d file, and later he will go ahead with that plan of swapping the bishops. So a5. Um, this here is um, a bit less timely than it was before. Here it turns out that white has a good way of challenging that pawn on b5. And while before, um, previously it was okay to play pawn to b4, uh, now this is not good because after b4 the knight comes up to c4 and now it starts to challenge the pawn. There's already a threat of knight takes, queen takes, knight to f6 check winning the queen because the rook is already on d1. So uh, turns out that black can't play pawn to b4 so he's forced into passive defense. Uh, h3, king h8, and the bishop comes to g4, and white improves his control over the light squares. And the bishops are swapped. Queen goes back, again increasing the pressure on the d-file, putting the pressure on uh, d6 pawn. So all these little um, inaccuracies that black committed at the time, which were not really all that well known, um, they gave White a much better position, but it's not a winning position yet. And it's going to be quite interesting to see how Karpov converts that uh, small advantage into, into a win. Uh, rook to c5, this is a big one inaccuracy. Uh, again, the rook here becomes kind of awkwardly placed, while at the same time it makes a bit of sense to overprotect the b-pawn. And now Karpov noticed that, um, well, by advancing these pawns to the 6th rank, black has somewhat weakened his 7th rank, and well, the 8th rank has been exposed all along, so now he wants to open up the queen side and uh, put some pressure on the black king that way, and we'll see that this strategy turns out to be very effective. Now white has the A file, he has a good grip on the center, and black's pieces, the bishop on g5 and this knight on a7, they're pretty weak, uh, well, the they're passively placed at the moment, uh, it's hard to activate uh, them, and um, both the white knights are quite strong. So all this gives white a solid advantage here. Uh, of course white does not take, as that would improve black's control over the center. Now black plays fairly passively, so he retreats. Uh, white puts a pin. Now, black has obtained a bit of the counterplay in the f-file, so white's uh, next few moves are aiming at um, reducing that pressure. So, for example, he cannot play g3, because that would give uh, black a pretty strong attack after the peace sacrifice. He only gets two pawns, but um, there's still a fair bit of pieces on the board, and he may have some potential, um, say if white goes knight to e3, he may try to bring more pieces to the back and he's got some good targets. So this would be a pretty unclear position. So Karpov avoids all that, he goes rook to f1, um, and um, he may want to play g3 later, but for the time being f2 is well protected. And this rook is kind of stuck here, it can't come back and put any more pressure on f2. Um, so black had to continue with knight to e7. White continues to put the pressure on d6, and now this is probably one of Black's last few chances to create counterplay. Uh, as Kasparov has pointed out in his book, um, Black should have done something like this. Um, basically giving the queen the e5 square and um, coming out with the pieces, putting pressure on the c-pawn, keeping his pieces active, um, this would have given him some play uh, for the pawn. He may have been able to achieve a draw that way. In the game, after queen d7, black just becomes more and more passive. He has to retreat. Um, uh, it was too late to, to put pressure on um, f2, and Karpov now increases his initiative. He now doesn't want to trade um, this bad rook because it's really stuck here 
it doesn't have any good squares so instead he notices that while well, this rook is um, defending the king so he plays rook uh, 6 to a3 and now the idea is to transfer rook over here and weaken the black king even further um, this is total domination this knight is so much better than this bishop so after a few more moves um, now there's more threats to the king um, black had to win his king and um, this is a decisive invasion white's threatening with queen to uh, f6 uh, and black has no defense against this check and white's just basically going to checkmate the king or win the spawn 